contrary to what many of you may believe, I am thoroughly enjoying what's going on with the Marlins right now. I get a huge amount of satisfaction watching them win at Fenway Park, which is great. We're 20 years past when I had a very memorable series at Fenway Park. Watching these Marlins is not just fun and interesting, but they're good. They're good to the point where it could be a sustained good. And Jazz Chisholm comes back, which I think will be disruptive. And, of course, the train is running. And when you've got a Marlins team or any baseball team where there is a potential turd in the clubhouse, nice. it actually gets covered up by winning and by not wanting to ruin what's happening. They put Jazz in, put him in the cleanup spot, goes deep, Jeremy, deep in the eighth inning, doesn't really matter for the game. And a game started by, I believe, the last guy I drafted, who's now pitching and doing very well for the Marlins. And people in Miami, I think they've got the fever. So what I'm hoping the attitude is around here today is a recognition that the Marlins should be on par with the Heat and Panthers. Wow. The wonderful season of sports in South Florida continues. You mean they're going to lose the World Series? God damn it. Please. If only from your five mouth to God's ear. Oh, my God. That's you, amazing. David, do you root against the Marlins winning another World Series? No, I want them to. I've always wanted them to because I believe it helps the franchise. It helps the history of the franchise. 97, 03, 23, as an right. example. It's amazing. Three in their history when there's teams who have zero. Right. I rooted against the Marlins when Jeter was there. And now that Jeter's gone... And they've got a lot of players who I like rooting for. If you're not rooting for Arias, then you're just not understanding baseball. He is so spectacular, and it's, it's been fun because they've got a series coming up with the Braves this weekend, and, and Braves Twitter hates Luis, Luis Arias because they're looking at Ronald Acuna Jr. as the MVP of the league, which he probably he will is. be and should be. But Luis Arias batting nearly 400, has all these people talking. It has him ahead of Ozzy Albies in the All-Star voting thus far as a Miami Marlin. It's making Braves Twitter angry. That's a rivalry weekend coming up this weekend that I don't think any of us have been able to take seriously for over a decade. And now you've got two teams very clearly at the top of the division. The Braves are the cream of the crop in the National League. But the Marlins have been playing as well as just about anybody, and this month they have the very best starting pitching in the league, which is what's supposed to lead them. Do we still have rivalries anymore? Like Marlins Braves, like you think people are like, oh yes, I can't wait. Like this is a rivalry fans. I'm excited for. Baseball fans. We no, but just across sports. What happened when interleague Yes, Tony, we still have rivalries. Eh. I feel as though interleague in baseball has hurted I maybe in the room, but in baseball, interleague sort of changed that where it was one series, Yankees-Mets. Before interleague, World Series would come, American League National League teams would never see each other, and it would be a thing. Isn't Yankees-Astros a rivalry and Dodgers-Astros a rivalry? Because the fans are angry because of 2017. Yeah, Yankees-Astros. Uh, have you guys yeah. heard of Yankees-Red Sox? I mean, they play every day, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They play every Still day. Still a rivalry. <laughs> I view the Yankees-Red Sox as uh, something that I like to ignore. It is a rivalry, without a doubt, but it had 28 other teams within baseball just upset, ah. always with the Dur Yankees during, Red Sox. During your tenure, what was your fiercest rivalry with the Marlins? Was it the Phillies? No, it was or the was Mets. it the Giants? The Mets. Always no, the it was Mets. just the Mets. Because, because you guys would always blow up the end of their seasons. Which we love to do, but yeah. no, that wasn't the reason. Let me guess. Because of the New Yorkers down here coming to the games. Nope. Wow. Because Mrs. Met is so good looking. <laughs> Everybody wants a piece nope. of that ass. <laughs> Wait, the Giants thing was like, that was real heat. There is only one person in this room who would know, and it would be you, why the Mets were the biggest rivalry for us. Al Leiter. <laughs> you are so close. Oh, Piazza? <laughs> no, Jeffrey Loria. Oh, he said to us before Yankees. the season that this is the team that I despise, and we have to beat them. He said before Mike Redman got fired, if Mike Redman, if we get swept by the Mets— I'm firing Redmond. Wow. And so we had to go to Redmond and say, Look. you got to manage these games like it's game seven. It's the reason Mike Redmond will not answer my birthday texts anymore. He blames me for what happened with him and his firing. 
You gave him the heads up, though. But I actually felt like I was communicating with him. I would have thought it was the Scott Cousins thing. With the Giants? Yeah, because that was, like, legitimate heat. That was a problem. Scott Cousins was a player. All of the catcher's issues right now is because of Scott Cousins he, on B- Buster Posey. He was one of our players who ran into Buster Posey, uh-huh. a superstar, broke his leg, right. ruined him, and then they changed the rules, and now no one knows the damn rules. Oh, as far as like what? When, when you can when you block can the, the plate. plate yeah. when but it was really hostile between the two teams thereafter. It was never the hostile in the front office or in the manager's office. There was certainly, I immediately called, I remember that day very clearly, called uh, Larry Bear, who was president of the Giants, to Larry say, Bear. listen, that was not, I don't know if you're related to him, Jeremy, that that was uh, an issue, and I apologized for that. But it happened, and he was not as angry as I thought he would be. But how will South Florida manifest this love of the Marlins it's not going to be through increased attendance. Well, they had 25,000 on Sunday, and, and it's, no. I mean, we're not even now, today, we are Wait, halfway actually, through the season. 25, yeah, truly 25,000? Like, truly 25,000. True yeah. numbers, huh? No lying. They give real numbers. This David, is not David Samson, Samson running the team. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is a real 25,000. Did someone threaten to sell the team? <laughs> it was Sandy Bobblehead. Keep it in was. mind with the attendance, Aww. with the upper deck closed, the capacity goes down from the ballpark. The capacity was 38. Capacity now really without the upper deck open, just call it about twenty eight. That's that. David, I want to go back to the birthday text thing for a second. When you text someone every year on their birthday and don't get a response, do you keep texting on their birthday to see if you will get a response, or as like a point of pride? Like, what's the deal there? It's definitely not a point of pride. Uh, there are there are two people in the baseball world who do not talk to me anymore. One is Mike Redman, and one is Mark Burley. And Mark Burley does not talk to me because of trading him to the Blue Jays where they don't allow dogs. (laughs) It was a big deal. He had to live in Broward because Dade County had certain rules against the breed of dog that he had. No way. What kind of dog did he have? Pit bulls. Really? They they did a lot of Believe it or not, there was a time where pit bulls weren't allowed in the 305. Mm. So wait a second. The Jays said no dogs or no pit bulls? It, 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 the Jays had nothing to do with it. There's actually laws in the province. Oh, wow. that Ontario. There's no pit bulls. And he thought that I knew this. And of course, because you used a, to live in Canada. Like, a, I didn't know it. Why wouldn't like you know? Dogs. You lived in Canada. And you don't like. No, I could see why he thinks that. Hold on. You lived in Canada and you don't like dogs. What you don't know is that now you know I don't like dogs. But at the time, Mark Burley, and he still does, is a huge dog family. He and his wife, Jamie. And we helped them do a lot of charitable work at Marlins Park when it came to dogs and pet adoption, etc. But the last thing on my mind, the last thing, was that Ontario doesn't allow pit bulls. Didn't even occur to me. But when I called Mark to tell him about the trade, also one of only two players I've ever called directly before trading them because I had such a close relationship with him. And he just got so angry, he would never speak to me again. Birthday texts are a way to connect with people who you don't necessarily reach out to often, but you want to them to know you're thinking about them and remember them. So I've always used that as a way to keep connectivity because I don't like if I need something from someone to not have contacted them for years and say, by the way, can I get this? When I don't get a response, my number is three, but I told it for COVID. So the rule was three years in a row, then I stop because then it's a ghost or purposeful. But I believe COVID changed that. So now I've started with a new three. So you, ha- so you essentially get six now. So it's in six cases, blues. What? Six blues. Like on the, the, on the uh, iMessage. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay. Oh, that made and they me said sound six old. blues, no, no, no. as in like, like, <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> like do, you, do you have any like South Peacock Plus or whatever the streaming <laughs> services? Do you have any plus. South Korean friends? Friends? Yeah. South I'm going somewhere with this. Yeah. Do you have any like, South Korean really? friends? Sop Choi? Like, because they all have new birthdays. <laughs> I was not pleased to yeah. tell this. me that. They all got younger. Because in South Korea, they started their age from when they were in the womb. And they now have changed it to when you were actually born. I think, yeah, I think when you're born, you're one, mm-hmm. right? Is that how it works? Essentially, because you've been in the womb for nine months. But what are their birthdays? So their birthdays before Conception were when, day? yeah. Wait, is Mina? Who knows? A is Mina like halfway day? between? I saw this because uh, Son from Tottenham Hotspur no. 
became 30 overnight. I thought you were going to say because of COVID, because everyone was joking when COVID started, like, oh, this year shouldn't count. And I was like, maybe South Korea really went for it. You know, this is I'm providing a service right now. You guys didn't know this. I'm loving this. Is this a retirement benefit pension issue? Oh, yeah. I I I love where your brain's going. (laughs) I'm trying to think in my head. I think this is more like a daylight savings time issue, which is like, yeah, that's a little antiquated. Everyone else does it this way. You know, kind of we should just make your birthday your actual birthday. But why today? I don't know why they decided there to do this to today. Been an I, Mike, you can't bring up a topic without knowing every single possible look, question that is going to be asked about said topic. I didn't do fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do any of this. <laughs> do shit. I am very happy to know that I'm going to actually text Hesop and ask him. This When's your new birthday? Like, this sounds like something because I have to know. Well, it's not like his old birthday was what he passed along, right? It's not like on his passport so it, was, it says. The, the reports were a little disingenuous because they were like Hungman's son became younger overnight, but the Premier League always registered him by their rules right. by the day of his birth, but he actually became, you know, younger. You know, the thing that's nuts about this is like everything is made up. Like, we made up the years, we made up how mm-hmm. old we are, we made up money. Time. Yeah, time. And then it's like, we, why don't we just make everybody younger? Like, no, nobody thought of that real before? Charlotte. <laughs> we did that like, just, in the Dominican just, like, Republic keep, every day. <laughs> like, print more money. I watched Albert Pujols. <laughs> <laughs> There's, we, you can make players younger all the time. You pay players when they're younger more money. Mm-hmm. And so everyone in the Dominican wanted to be younger. The irony of Albert Pujols being in charge of the Dominican Republic now is not lost on me. I think that the Dominican is going to come out with a new rule soon that everyone is four years younger. Forget the womb. They're going to go with a straight four. So Albert Pujols was born in America, though, and everyone just like that was always around Albert Pujols. Mm -hmm. The rumor that he was actually older than he was saying when he strolled into the league and was like the best player immediately as Mark McGuire's replacement. It was extremely common for players to both. We had a Marlin do it. Leo Nunez is not Leo Nunez. He wasn't even Leo Nunez. Was, that was his best friend. So in the Dominican, <laughs> you are going to see things happen in Korea and the Dominican. We're not going to know anything. My phone needs a reset. Miami is the center of the sports universe to me. It's the center of the political universe. I felt it when I lived here. I feel it when I visit here. And it was the center of the baseball world again in my mind yesterday. There was a perfect game while everybody was sleeping, including me. Finally got some rest and got woken up by CBS Sports saying, get on the air, Domingo Herman, a former Marlin, of course, has thrown a perfect game where we will now have to memorialize. Baseball just can't get out of its own way. We have a perfect game thrown by a man who was suspended for 81 games Mm -hmm. for domestic abuse issues in 2020, suspended 10 games this year, last month, for sticky stuff, and he is now on the Mount Rushmore of Yankee pitchers as the fourth Yankee pitcher, former Marlin, to throw a perfect game against a team that MLB wants you to forget about immediately and now we can't ever forget about. It's the worst scenario. I pictured Rob Manford sitting around figuring out what he doesn't ever want to see and last night was it. You you think he's actively rooting around that 27th potential out, please break this up because everyone's going to learn about (laughs) Domingo Herman. Throw something on the outside. I, I have to admit, I, I just learned about him. He's been around for a while. 
Last night was my introduction to Domingo Herman, and I immediately found out about his past and the 81 game suspension and the horrifying details of his domestic violence. You didn't remember him as a Marlin? No. So he was traded. We traded him. He was a throw in, an absolute throw in who's still a player 10 years later. I didn't fart. I moved the keyboard. Everyone thought I farted. Yeah, Fart Bear. Thank you for derailing a conversation. Well, it's just I got a bunch of looks. Like I farted. I didn't fart. It sounded like a fart. I do shit. <laughs> I promise that the reason Rob Manford wanted to see, have nothing to do with last night and would have called the umpires had he had a direct line, if he had the umpires in his cell phone, he would have been able to call and say, we're going to need a walk here. We're going to need something because we can't have this guy as the face of our perfect game. What interests me about it further is that the Yankees now have to celebrate him, and so does MLB with ads and with accolades and with parades, and they are parading out a domestic abuser. How many perfect games have there been in the history? This was the 24th. Jesus. It's That's been it. 11 years since the last one, I mean. So there's no way to kind of avoid it. Oh, yeah, congratulations and keep it moving. When you sit in Stu's chair, it does not, for this segment, it doesn't mean you have to be like Stu. You I could have known it was the 24th perfect game. Well, no. It's right in the notes. What notes? The prepared notes. What well, prepared notes? We don't have notes. notes. We, no, this no. is all off the cuff. What yeah. notes? Well, you should know better. What, what I story? Send notes to what are you people, talking about? So people have an idea <laughs> that there's been a 24th perfect game. Where's so, the first where's, one? Charlotte just had out of nowhere that it was the first one since King Felix. So she just knew that because she watches a lot of baseball. She didn't read any notes. I was she reading the CBA last night all till one thirty in the watch morning. The end of the game. I just learned Done. about this guy this morning. I walked in and said, oh, the guy's through a perfect game. It. Also, he's a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> I, I, That's about it. Yeah. I've, I've been like eyeball deep in the legalese trying to decipher these paragraphs where they keep talking around in circles over and over again. So, Are we paying I, you for that? Is that part of what – like you had to read all 676 pages last night I, and well, not watch the perfect game? Yeah, pretty much because they wouldn't ask me about the perfect game. They'd ask me about the CBA this morning, which I could not answer any questions about because I'm completely confused by. So, yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> to be fair, that is kind of a means job. But, David, I guess your is your point that MLB is okay having this person in the league despite knowing what he did. They they think that the punishment he get he got was sufficient enough for him to come back and play and teams are willing to sign him. They just don't want him to be great at baseball. Well, they're happy with him being great at baseball, but not historic. <laughs> not you want to win some games. You want to be on a good team. Fine. But it was also, it's a negotiated. To be clear, his suspension was not just Rob deciding. That's the union negotiating with management saying, if you violate it, and like steroids, you go 81, 162. There's also places uh, where there can be grievances and negotiations about how it works for his 81 game suspension. But there are players that get suspended that could be reinstated on a team that no one wants to pick up because they don't consider them to be like appropriate to sign to a baseball team for Trevor PR Bauer reasons or other reasons. So like what's what's the difference here? Domingo Herman is a depth piece who is viewed as not having gone to Bowerland. Bowerland is a place <coughs> where there is no recovery from. He will never play in MLB again. There's no memos that get sent out. It's just all the owners know you're not signing Trevor Bauer. The unwritten rules. The unwritten rules. Barry Bonds, Trevor Bauer. Nothing about Domingo Herman. The Yankees were not so, told. So how do you collectively conspire to blackball someone? Not on email, but during a birthday text. Ah! When you're communicating, it happens uh, only orally. No phones, no emails, no texts. And it's not collusion. It's not active. It's word gets around. Hey, did you hear? I didn't hear. Did someone tell you? No, no one told me. You're not going to, you're is, not signing Bauer, right? No, we can't. We're not signing Bauer. Don't be ridiculous. It's when you do something in the affirmative, saying you're not going to do something, when you know that you can't, but you think you're making it, your own decision. Is, yeah, I was going to say, is, is it even an explicit conversation that's even had orally? I, I've always felt like it's one of those things where the person's track record is so heinous, it's like, 
I'm not going to do it. Or, or some, you know, here's another example that's not in the heinous realm. When Chris Bosh had his blood clot issue, and then he went to like seven doctors to find the one that would say, yeah, he can play. That was one of those ones where it's like, no one's going to sign him. Not because we all got together and said nobody signed Chris Bosh, but because no one wants to assume that sort of responsibility and risk inherent with signing a guy who could drop dead in, in the middle of a game. And he tried to sign with the Lakers too, right? He was working out with them. He had yep. the relationship with Palinka, Yep. And they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. and So, so they were looking out for his health. No, they were looking out for themselves to not – be the ones that got, you know, rained down upon if something happens to him. You're the guys that you knew and, and he had to go find some quack doctor. You guys went along with it, whatever. Similarly, they're not looking out for, you know, justice or whatever. They're looking out for the baseball team. They're looking out for, I'm not going to be the guy that signs this guy and then has to deal with the fallout. It's not, the juice isn't worth the squeeze to use one of your terms. I have a different view of, the, of, a, of an injury situation. But but versus I, I guess, a domestic violence. Well, uh, absolutely, but I'm just saying in in both of those cases, this person is non-signable for different, completely different reasons. But it it never has to be like a conversation with the commissioner. By the way, David, you you can't sign. Never the commissioner, or, or you know, like it, it, plausible it, deniability. There you go. But like, there's never a conversation. Uh, indicating a directive, yeah, or hey, this is what we're do- doing. It's made pretty clear. It's made pretty Is clear. It? With the with the domestic violence stuff though, I, I feel like it's it's charitable to say this guy's so bad we're not gonna sign him. It's often there was so much bad PR around this guy, That's it got what, out. Yeah. People found out. Yeah. There are people who've done horrible things who are still on sports teams. But if you have a situation like Trevor Bauer, which escalates to the point that everybody uh, you say Trevor Bauer and even non baseball fans usually know if they're sports fans. Yeah. And so it has Less to do with how bad the person was, I think, from a often from a team standpoint, it's it's how much damage is this going to do to our organization is the most cynical read. And it's about like who's the most front facing, who's communicating with the public. Domingo Herman not doing that, not doing it in English for the most part. Marcelo Zuna, who we talked about last week, another former Marlin, another domestic abuser, who is, I mean, his track record is horrendous and as a player it's relatively mediocre except for a few very good seasons at the beginning of his career he's been bad right now for the Braves except for now like the last few weeks where he's you know been swinging a hot bat but the reason he was going to get cut is because there's all this baggage and yet all right he's hot for a month and we'll keep him around because well we're not going to parade him out to the public and what you don't want in the same scenario would be Marcelo Zuna setting some sort of home run record if you're major league baseball or anything like that it's the dirty part of the game of if we can sort of just hide these guys in the crevices of our rosters then eh we're fine with it People but if they're Trevor attention. Bauer you know who's who's an asshole publicly then you know we'll wipe our hands and say we did a good job it's and that's actually the frustrating what front part. offices do the part of the calculus Charlotte is exactly that. How much can we get away with where we don't have to answer to the media or worry that we'll get any sort of blowback from sponsors or season ticket holders or anyone who's giving us operating money? If MLB feels as though there are going to be national sponsors who are going to want to shy away because of a situation, they will get themselves involved. If it's a more local issue, it's up to the team to figure out whether or not the juice is worth the squeeze. And that's why MLB should not promote this perfect game, but promote the incredible story of the current Miami Marlins and Jazz Chisholm yeah. Jr. leading the way. What a likable guy. They're not going to do that. No. And the reason they're not, John Skipper has, I've asked him so many times why he won't promote the Marlins when he was president of ESPN. And all he does is talk about the Red Sox and the Yankees. That's all he wants. Spot the lie. I can't. I'm just saying. I they, can't. They do numbers. <laughs> we had so many great stories here in Florida over the years. And you can say we didn't, and you can be upset, as upset as you want. Unbelievable number of great Marlin stories. We got a bunch of Sports Illustrated covers. We had Don Trell on the climate change cover of SI. D-Train. If you go back and look at the press box at Marlins Park, it's all the great covers. Did Jeter change that? 
No, that's all still there. That's all still there. You got the body paint, Giancarlo Stanton issue. You've got Miguel Cabrera with his backwards hat and sunglasses. All of those are still up in the press box. You know who else has a lot of SI covers? At Fenway, the Red Sox. They've got a lot of SI covers. They're in the the park, hanging up on the walls. Giancarlo Stanton signed one of the Sports Illustrated covers. Because SI even still exists. With the paint, which they don't exist, but he was on the cover, and he signed it. Dear David, I bet you wish you could have painted this on me. Love, Giancarlo Stanton. Hell yeah. I, found, I, I said to him after, what, what, what is that about? But yet, we wanted it on the board. We wanted it in the hallway because we wanted the Marlins to be relevant where baseball does not give relevance to anyone but the Red Sox and the Yankees. And I've had enough of it, as a matter of fact. I think the way you end this is the Yankees should get zero attention, the Red Sox zero attention, and make it all about the Reds and Marlins starting today. Ew! There is so much money involved with gambling now as we sit here with our great partners at DraftKings. The leagues spend their time trying to figure out how much can we get without blowing it all. Because if we lose the integrity, then we're done. And the NFL has decided they're going to wake up. This is their moment. We're going to start suspending people for gambling because it's so easy to gamble now. And there's a bunch of rules of what you can and can't do, including don't beat a practice facility. And a bomb was dropped yesterday that there's going to be a huge group of players that are going to be suspended potentially for the entire season. Yet we only know about the guy from the Colts and the guys from the Lions. Yeah, and Calvin Ridley last year from, for the Falcons. It, it's one of those things where – so. I believe at least a couple of these guys got suspended not for betting on NFL, but for betting from within an NFL facility. Or during team travel, or there's all these places. Well, NFL facility should always be clarified to everybody. It means not only your stadium, your practice facility, but also the team bus, the team plane, anytime you're Anything team-related is a facility. Is a facility. And I wonder, is that antiquated? To say, hey, you can't bet on other things from here. Why? Why is that a rule, David? What's the downside of allowing players or umpires or referees or coaches to bet on not their sport? I don't think they should be able to bet on any sport, really, anywhere. Why not? At any time, because you're on the slippery slope. And now we're seeing the problem. The slippery slope got right to NFL players betting on the NFL. The NCAA actually just put out new guidelines yesterday for college athletes because they initially had a zero tolerance policy for sports betting on anything. And now they've changed it so that the penalties are harsher if you bet on your own sport on a different team or your own sport, obviously, at your own school. That's the worst thing you could do Um, versus if you're betting on like something completely, yeah, completely unrelated to the the sport that you're playing. And there's like a tiered approach to how they're going to be penalizing players for it and the percent of eligibility that they'll lose, et cetera. Um, They're throwing their hands up, Mike. That's all they're doing now. I mean, if you're betting the ponies, you're betting everything. So, so that that's what that's the slippery slope. There is no greater or, red flag than betting yeah. the ponies. Or it's April twenty twenty. I Wait, think so betting what? the Rockies may be a <laughs> yeah, sure sign that you're betting everything. Betting the Rockies versus betting the ponies. That's I like, had my pony phase. You don't want to do the pony I, phase. Because David has told a story about Paula Duca 
asking for a salary advance because yeah, he's not just sticking to the ponies. But so it, I have no indication that Paula Duca was betting on baseball whatsoever. I, ever I, I'm not saying very clear. Did you, I'm not saying he's betting on baseball, but if you're betting the ponies, you're not just betting the ponies. Uh, let, so David, it, you may you, be smoking cigarettes too. I don't think I think you can bet horses and not bet football. I guess my question is this: is in your experience as president of a major league baseball team, where you knew there was gambling going on, maybe it's gambling on a plane, maybe it's you know a card game, whatever. But did you ever suspect any of your players could be gambling on baseball? You have to remember that it was not as accessible. This is all about accessibility. The reason the rules are changed Mm -hmm. now is simply because you can gamble from anywhere with a click. You can gamble like you can order a taco to your hotel room. And the, the league has these official partnerships now with all sorts of gambling entities. And as part of those partnerships, the partners have to share data with the leagues. To and keep it's them. much easier that's to how, track them. Yeah, we've mentioned it on the show before, but that's how Calvin Ridley got pinged. The betting application that he was placing bets on provided that to the league. I have some IT advice, which is turn your location services off. I'm not. But then you can't bet. Then you can't bet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to be contrarian, but like, what is when you say slippery slope? Are you like if players are allowed to vo- vote? <laughs> if vote players, my money. If players are allowed to bet. On other sports, are you saying that it's inevitable that they will eventually bet on their own sport? I am absolutely saying that. Okay. Because I I guess I just... The ponies are marijuana in this case. It's a gateway. (laughs) The gateway. (laughs) And betting on other sports is a gateway. Eventually, it's just easy to click. It could be an incentive if you're you're betting on your team to win. You should be allowed to bet on your own team to win. That's the Pete Rose Rose defense. defense. I I want to win. Yeah, but uh, the days... Pete Rose defense, Charlotte. I mean, can't allow that in here. Jim Rome's take on it was always like, anytime that you then didn't bet on your team was essentially a bet against your team. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. Point. Also, the whole gateway oh, drug Romy. thing. <laughs> the gateway drug thing never flew with me because contrary to what my character does, like, I've only done weed. I'm think, just stuck at the, the gate. I think the gateway drug thing was, is, like, proven to be false. It is fear monitoring. So let him yeah, gamble. I'm just, I'm just chilling here at the really work, yeah. so. <laughs> the The gateway you drug thing is, was actually started by parents who were trying to protect their kids who were smoking pot. Yeah, but drugs are cool, harder, so. Yeah. Everyone's no. doing it. Therefore, it's totally it's legal fine. now. The weed is. I'm all in. Well, That's just fine. turn off your location. You or, have to or turn off the, the location. The thing I never got also is why don't you just have someone else do it for you? The, the weed? Smoke weed? No. The, guys, come on. <laughs> Stay on track. Because you can, but there's going to be a money trail. They, they track Venmo now. Wow. For all of you doing Wait Venmo, you better know if you're getting paid on <laughs> Venmo. Right. Who's that, tracking? Even if you, you make it private? Who's track, hold on. Who's tracking my Venmo? What if I put a chandelier as the description? If you not that I've do done not that. declare <laughs> income on Venmo, you are breaking the law. It's not, uh, it's not income if you keep it in the app. And then you're just transferring credits. Yep. Yes, it is. No. Yes. No. If it never goes into your yes. bank account, Th- that's the whole point. No. Oh, all right. Oh, but we're talking about gambling, so there's no income. And <laughs> there are gambling. It's outcome statements. As right well. off. Right off your losses. You, you can. You can write off your gambling losses only if you pay taxes on your gambling wins. But there's. We've established <laughs> who, who there's wins? no wins. <laughs> who wins? <laughs> you have to do. You have to do the great scene from Let It Ride. No, no When's knows. the last time he won any money? Eight years ago, nine dollars. <laughs> oh, those are the best. That's pretty much how oh, it when goes. They, when they send you uh, a cash app that says, you know, chandelier, <laughs> but it's eight dollars and fifty-seven cents. It is one of the great businesses. Christian what a it. beautiful studio we have with all sorts of great people. I worry greatly, as the leagues are, that if, in fact, all these players get suspended, Mm -hmm. the NFL is putting itself in a position to acknowledge that they have a disease, and that disease could spread. You can't do that. You can't do that. At what point does, like, an A-list athlete – I mean, Calvin Ridley is a pretty, pretty, like, high-level player, but, like, at what point does, like, a really, really high-level player get in trouble and then they don't know what to do about it? Well, no, no, they don't get suspended. They just decide to play baseball. That's shoeless Joe Jackson. Well, oh. right? also you're, you're, someone else. You're talking about. Speaking of SI covers. Very important to note that he didn't like the that leagues one. have the issue of the A-list players now. 
which is why we're not seeing names. Very common when there's a steroid issue and it's gonna be someone like a Fernando Tatis, there's preparation that goes into the release of that because it's going to be a PR situation. You mentioned A-list players and one player certainly comes to mind and that's Jazz Chisholm. Man, he Electric. has been so great, and the team loves him, and the chemistry is amazing. Jumped it's so the interesting that their offense has absolutely exploded since Jazz Chisholm Jr. came back into the lineup, and that everyone on the team, all they could talk about is how great the chemistry is and how much he missed his team. It's so interesting why to me. I wonder who would have like told this? you why that you, that could happen. Why is he being a shill? Is that what, your question? What kind of voice was that? I walked into a hipster He's... coffee shop, and everyone was talking about Jazz Chisholm and how likable he was not He's, one person he survived the jizz time jizz. dan called him jizz to that i give him oh. lots of credit jizz chasm did he call him that to his face no on the show like multiple times oh, okay. <laughs> it is critical what the marlins are doing is trying to get jazz more likable f outward facing i assure you you think he wasn't likable outward facing but they're trying to continue to build that yeah of course that's big when he's doing commercials with the captain mlb wants that badly the marlins want that badly and it is not uncommon to go to the players in the clubhouse and have a conversation. Hey, can we lay off? Can we try to make nice? Is there any way? We did that with Hanley Ramirez, Red Sox, former Red Sox. You're welcome. Josh Beckett, you're Thank welcome. Thank you for the respect, David. You've never once Mike Lowell. thanked me for one of your rings. <laughs> I love that. I love that. If, not what? one time. Mm -hmm. Why would I? Because Mike Lowell. Because David blew up the Marlins Josh and gave Beckett. all their good players to the Red Sox. Oh, well, thanks, David. There you go. That's Are all he's been right? asking for. Are you happy now, David? David? Was no. that hard? What, what did you get yeah, back? Evaldi? Are you learning this for the first time right now? No, I Beckett don't remember stuff sometimes. Came I, from the Marlins? Are you, you know she's like multiple decades younger than you, right? <laughs> no, this is what I'm asking. So that, So the Red Sox World Series are not meaningful to you. This isn't what? The, this isn't what? the flex that you think it is, David. Yeah. What are you saying, David? I forgot right that the Red. I was focused on the Red Sox winning the World Series, not on how the Marlins had what they had to do with the Red Sox winning the World Series. They're completely related. But in my head, as to a sports you. fan who enjoys my Red Sox, when they won, I was very happy about the Red Sox, and I was in. I was a sophomore in high school, and not I was like, "You don't me. have to awesome. defend yourself, to I, David." No, no, no. Trying to get can, credit for a team that he was not a even Red in Sox charge of World Series. winning a World Series, well, while his own team was not winning some, several somewhere World Somewhere Dale series. Talon is telling this to the biggest Knights fans. Oh, yeah, Jesus. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. why, why are you doing this to me now, Mike? <laughs> you got to be brought in. This happens. It's not just that it happens with the Marlins. To me, this actually happens all the time where players win championships because they acquire players from other teams. It's not just the Marlins. Did the Red Sox themselves thank you when they won the World Series? The conversation definitely came up mm -hmm. with John Henry and Tom Werner. Mm -hmm. and they, and by Did they came, say thank by you? came up, like, you're going to thank me now? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why sports owners can't bet on teams, because David could have put all his chips in the Red Sox basket oh, and traded did away you, all their best players, when, and when they could have won, and he could have cashed out. That would have been smart. When yeah. you did that, did you have a feeling like, oh, my God, I've, I've just sent the World Series up to Boston? We're making them better, and it was very frustrating. Shipping up to Boston. Yeah. Very, very upset. <laughs> Terrible song. I hate all Boston sports teams because they have to play that song at least seven times a night, no matter the sport. I'm with you. Notre Dame plays it too. Really? Yeah. What? I think Irish it's a catchy song. too. The Irish thing. <laughs> Do you hate Neil Diamond? It's controversial. That? Neil Diamond? Yeah. Do you know who Neil Diamond is? He's yes. an American uh, treasure. You ever he seen has the like padded? I, I've Sweet seen Caroline? Sadie Silverman. I hate Sweet Caroline with a passion. You can't, you're not allowed to. He's sick. Is he? Yeah, he's out. Yes, he stopped touring. He's got Parkinson's. But oh, you can Jewish still Elvis. hate "Sweet Caroline" as a song if you hate Boston. Did John yeah. Henry thank you for the World Championship after a happy birthday text? No, he was still too angry about the bus. Actually, or after you guys worked with him and the rest of the crew to uh, screw over the Expos in Montreal to get him to Boston and you down to Florida. Hey, but thank you for colluding against Trevor Bauer. That was a thank you.
Yeah, Ligma Parkinson's. Lig- Ligma okay, Parkinson's. I didn't know he actually was sick. I was, I just don't like the song. <laughs> it's like a thing young people say 10 years ago. Yeah. That I still say. <laughs> Bofa. <laughs> right. I was hoping no one heard me say it also. Well, I, they all saw you shrink. Yeah. I didn't. I thought you said it in my ear. Because uh, this is surely back. someone's judgment can't be this bad. <laughs> pull, back, <laughs> pull back the curtain. Maybe I did. Pull back the curtain on this show. Oftentimes, when Jess and I are on the show at the same time, we're doing a completely different show. Especially when I have controls of like when I'm not in the third seat. That the, as David pointed out yesterday, it doesn't have any of the fancy controls that allow you to talk there and then talk back to you, or whatever. And so we do all these jokes that never make it on air. That's very helpful to Mostly the audience. Mostly untoward. Yeah, David, have you ever had ligma? I don't know what that is. I've been you don't completely li- left, <laughs> left out of this entire situation. You, you've never had ligma. You're all pressing buttons. You've never had ligma. Doing a show. You've never had ligma. I don't know what ligma is. I ligma guess. balls. <laughs> that is quality. That's yeah. what you're doing. That's why it's during a show. That's why it's it's the second him. show. <laughs> no, no, that's not even a third show. It's just distracting <laughs> from what we're trying to do here. What are we trying to do here? We're it's, trying to just get through it. It's a real mind game. SNA day. SNA day. Ligma? Balls. Do you have to say the ball? I'm not yeah. going to do it. I'm First decades name ligma. older than Charlotte. Yeah. I can't say Ligma. What? Not going to do it. You just said it, though. I think I'm trying to be young if I do that. I am who I am. You it's think a, I'm young? It, it, no, it's so are you saying, are you she said I'm that. Young? Maybe you have Sugma. Uh, go ahead. It's truly a mind goblin. Press a button. Press a button and tell me what Sugma is. <laughs> you got this. And there goes Jessica do you, out of the room. Do, do you know my Cuban friend, Dale Ham? I would rather you keep imitating the weekend. Do, do you know my, my, my Cuban friend, Dale Ham? No. Who is you don't know Dale Ham? Dale Ham. Absolute. Showstopper. I mean, what's a mind goblin? <laughs> We're spending up all night reading CBAs, trying to make the audience smarter and entertained, and you're no. doing jokes with the button press that makes it so no one else can hear. That's the beauty of the show. Oh, no. That's not it. <laughs> the beauty is when you don't press the button and you do <laughs> you it. You say it out loud? No. Sometimes it's all about getting that ripple effect in that room. It's Dale Hammond. I've been trying to figure out how to incorporate Bofa into a sentence for the past five minutes. <laughs> and Dale, D's as well. Dale Hammond. We can wait for you. How much more time no, do you I'm need? No, I'm good. I can't, I can't land the plane. So this is it. Uh, so you took off with no chance in sight of adding to the show at all. Just telling me that I, there's nothing I got here. That's why I was brought in, David. I'm, uh, I'm nebulous. I'm looking for my my friend, hug and kiss. First name Amanda. Have you seen her? No. Where is she? Where Amanda is- hug and kiss. <laughs> I'm looking for Amanda hug and kiss. <laughs> I'm looking you- for Amanda hug and kiss. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I'm a, a hugger. That's a classic bit. Is it bothersome to people the, to that hug? A Depends on who you're hugging. Do you have to get permission when when you do a, a man hug? When, uh, I come, when I come in here, I haven't seen people for a long time. What what kind of hug are we talking? Um, Two like hands the, around the, the back, or the one where you do one hand the the, the birthday da- the one da- hand and then one hand around the back. I'm the one hand around and then the other hand mostly at my side. Unless I have a different type of personal relationship longstanding, in which case I'll do the two-hand wrap. Let me give you the tiers right here. Tier one is just a regular dap, and you keep a stiff arm in between because there's no closest. Tier two is dap, and then you pull them close, but no other additional thing. Tier three is dap, close, and then hand, other hand pats on the back. Tier four is two arms, whole on embrace. And then on the side, this isn't in the tiers. It's just kind of a, an alternate. It's the side hug, which is usually when you're hugging too many people all at once, you're like, hey, how's it going? Side hug here, side hug here, side hug here. Or if you have something on your, under your hand, you're carrying, you give a side hug. Those are all the different types of hugs and salutations you can give. I would say that the embrace, two arms around, that is the most intimate of the hugs, and that's only reserved for close friends that you haven't seen in a long time or um 
any intimate uh What's it called when you family walk into uh, the studio You're welcome. and no one says good morning, hello, or any words at all? Is that the opposite of the two arm wrap around intimate hug? When no one says hello, I don't know. I'm I, I don't you know. Ah. I don't say hello, I don't think. <laughs> I think we've gotten a lot better at that, though. When I, hello? when I started working here, you kind of just showed up, and people kind of, yeah. you, if you're lucky, you get like a grunt. Yeah. Now, <laughs> some people say hi. You're so particular about these things. Are you, you're like obsessive compulsive about how people greet you. Are you OCD? I think it's important. OCD is nuts. Think... Thank you, Mike. <laughs> oh, is Thank that you. another one? Thank you. Ah. Got you there, David. <laughs> Walked right into that one. He's like Hawkeye over here, right between the eyes. This has been an awe-inspiring. Like the Imagine Dragons hour. of uh, of these types of jokes. Do you like Imagine Dragons? There was a concert <laughs> outside the hotel last night. Do you like Imagine Dragons? Do you like cigarettes after sex? I, I saw them yesterday. Do you like Imagine Dragons? I know the Imagine Dragons. Imagine Dragon <laughs> these nuts. <laughs> Someone's got to send this hour to Saban. We are doing way. Lots of substitute teacher stuff right now. <laughs> no, it feels trust me, that way we to do me. The, we do this at the regular teacher too. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't like it anymore. That's why he's not here no, today. He <laughs> That's why he needs a mental health break. Oh, did I let the cat out of the bag? <laughs> From where I'm sitting, it's not a OCD issue for greeting. It's what I think helps a workplace. Where's your bag of candy? Uh, it's still the first hour. It's oh, in my bag you... right here to my right. Can these nuts fit? <laughs> you really are the Imagine Dragons of this. <laughs> Mike, I'm going to give you the next few minutes to come up with a top five of ways you can get me to say things that will make you all laugh while the button's being pressed. Whatever you can come up with, we're just going to keep going with it. I think greetings matter. Do you like pudding? Good one. No, I don't like pudding. Putting these nuts in your mouth. Do you know that there is pork in pudding? Sometimes, Did you know sometimes, that? Sometimes. Del- gelatin. gelatin. Yeah, animal bones. Um, pig hoofs. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Man, you didn't grow up in a strict household. Then. <laughs> Are you talking about Dietary. gelatin? Yeah. Gelatin. That's di- Okay. There's some non there's some, there's some non-animal non- gelatin. You have to read the You yeah. have to yes, you have to I didn't know you had to read it. Hmm. Until a year ago. Oh. oh, dude, as a kid, everything we bought from the supermarket, you have to read it and see if it says anything about, because some things will say vegetable byproduct, and then some things will say vegetable and slash or animal byproduct, and that's a that's an automatic no, because that means they took the pig snout and tail and hooves. And, and they made Bill Cosby do a commercial about it. He <laughs> said, don't you worry. I think it's wrong when you're ordering food for a group of people to order only things that have pork in it. And it happened Same note too, bro. yesterday with pizza. When mm-hmm. you order pizzas for mm-hmm. a party, is it not acceptable to have some pizzas that don't have pork? David, I'm glad you, you brought have a up pizza this. party. This is you, some, wait. You, someone ordered only Wendy's. meat pizzas yesterday. Hold on, hold on. I, this I, is I prefer Wendy's. I've never had a Wendy's party. Wendy's <laughs> nuts track across your face. <laughs> ah! Whoa! Gene Parmesan. Ah! I did it again. <laughs> Yo, no, David, I'm glad this is this is one of my signature battles because since the dawn of time, whenever I, or actually since I left my house, went to college. Right? <laughs> close, so close. close, very close. Really close. Yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. The concept of hey guys, let's get pizza. Cool. What do you want? Cheese. Cheese is boring. What? Just cheese? Who is just cheese? All right. What do you guys like? Pepperoni. I don't eat that. Sausage. I don't eat that. Okay. So we'll order a bunch. And they order like five pizzas, right? And one will be super pig here and super duper pig here and super duper pig. And it'll be the one cheese pizza. And I'm like, well, everyone said cheese is boring. So it's almost like I'm going to have this cheese pizza to myself. Uh, Wrong. Wrong, because all the people say, cheese is boring. When they come to pizza, I think I'll have a slice of you this cheese. You shouldn't be allowed to touch the cheese pizza if you are willing uh, to eat meat on your pizza. Exactly. If you are anti-cheese as a, as a selection, because the reality is there should be like, if there are five pizzas, two of them should have pork on them. 
or whatever, and three should be cheese. It can't be more than 50%. Because everybody eats cheese. Everybody eats cheese. What are you fist bumping back there about, Wilder? Oh, well. <laughs> I said that I, uh, I grew up having to take all the cheese off of my pizzas because I'm a little Jewish guy who had little tummy aches based off of totally lactose intolerance. And I'm Jewish, too, so we fist bumped. That, so that was it. You fist bumped because you're Jewish? Yeah, yep. just shout out the that's, Jews, you know? I mean, ask what happened back here, and that's what happened so, back sometimes here. Sometimes you need to shout out the Jews. So good for M-O-T. us. M.O.T. Where's the fist bump my way? Yeah. Oh, it's oh, a long fist glass. bump. You're behind yeah. glass plate, there, there you go. Um, there, there's your fist Jeremy, bump. so you would just have bread and sauce? Yeah, essentially. It was really fist embarrassing bump? and sad. Oh, you, you want a pound? You were a brave little boy with a brave little tummy ache. You want yeah, a pound? I did. It was really cute. You mm. want a pound? It is amazing. Sure, Mike. Yeah. I would love a pound. Want a pound? Number these of oh. <laughs> who have lactic acid and who have, what's the, what's the acid where you can't? Uh, lactose. Lactose intolerant. That's Never existed when I was a kid. Now people have the allergies. No, I, it existed. People just would have. Yeah, we didn't know. Terrible well, diarrhea. Not know why. I I'm, I'm convinced that most people are lactose intolerant and just suffer needlessly. Lactose is a sugar, by the way. It's not an acid. I'm not getting on a plane Lact- and lactase, hearing someone I tell me I can't eat peanuts. Lactic acid is an acid. But that's a different. No, the that's, la- that's the stuff in your lactose muscle that builds is different up. From yeah. lactic acid. So you take the little lactose. lactate pills and it has the enzyme that breaks down the lactose so that you don't get a tummy ache. But like there I I have so many friends. They're like, "Oh, I'm going to go get a big milkshake at Kilwins, but I'm going to have a tummy ache after." And I'm like, "Yeah, cuz you're lactose intolerant." They're like, "No." And I'm like, "Yes." I think most people have lact- lactose problems. You know why? Because the mayor of Tummy Ache City doesn't do a good enough job. Of cleaning up the streets. That's true. It just yeah. allows all this stuff to happen. I stopped, I stopped drinking milk and eating dairy ever since I got into fitness. I had to have a fitness cup of milk deal. every day. <laughs> Set, go ahead, Mike. Finish us off. Give me one hey. other great one. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I don't even hey, need, I don't no, even need David. a one. <laughs> yes. so yeah. Wow. This we was such a good segment. What a, mind goblin, what a mind goblin of a segment. I would like some pizza, and I'd like some milk, and I'd like a fist bump just from anyone about anything one time.